You've probably heard in Twitter the hashtag survival horror is back and let me tell you that it is. The Callisto Protocol is the first video game in a series of horror video games that are going to be coming out in the next 12 months, making the year 2023 the best year for horror video game fans in a while. The Callisto Protocol is not a game changer when it comes to storytelling in horror video games, but it is rather a simple, hard and immersive horror experience that any action horror fan should play. Gameplay. The gameplay is simple, hard to master, but doesn't take long to do so. It is a third-person linear melee shooter with minor exploration, which I did not mind. It provides you, the player, with enough firepower and weapons such as 3D printed modular pistols, shotguns and assault rifles coupled with Jedi-like force gloves to take on your opponents, so plentiful of armory, but you actually have an entire melee fighting system at your disposal too, which isn't something we had in Dead Space. You can upgrade all of these weapons and tools with currency that you get from selling extra stuff you find in the world. Yet that doesn't mean that the aliens are going to be pushovers though, because they come just as strong, but lacking in variety. About halfway through the game, you've seen pretty much all of the characters. It, it, it does grow a little stale, but the reveals are regardless breathtaking themselves. The environment can also be used to eliminate the enemy threats by pushing or throwing monsters into fan blades, which come with awesome sound design, more on that in the sound section of this video, or you can just throw them off into the abyss or walls. Story. For those of you who have heard, this game is directed and made by Glenn Schofield, original team leader of one, if not the best horror video games in my opinion of all time, Dead Space. Him and some of new and veterans of the Dead Space team worked on the Callisto Protocol, so you will see a resemblance in gameplay and story design, but with more melee power than Isaac Clarke ever had. It also dwells more on the realistic side with technology focus rather than paranormal. I will have a video review of the Dead Space Remake Remaster in January 2023 when that comes out, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Graphics Performance This title is available on all Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, Xbox One X, Xbox One S, PC, and PlayStation 5 with PS4. I think on next-gen consoles it feels and looks next-gen, but on the Xbox One S it doesn't. But on Xbox One X, it would too, yet it doesn't because of the texture popping that happens often. Not bad, but it is noticeable, yet they did say they're going to be fixing that. I also recommend you set your gamma in the settings to monitor sRGB instead of TV 2.1 or TV 2.2, especially if you're using an OLED TV so you can get better blacks. Real quick, by the way, vibrations in this game are one of the best I've ever experienced. I'm saving up to get it on the PS5 later on next year because I've heard it is amazing on that controller. But for now, on the Xbox controller, I think it pushes that controller vibration engines to the limit. As you can see also on the frame FPS performance on the Xbox One S and Xbox One X, they're not great. So for people playing on the hardest difficulty, may Lord have mercy on your souls. The input lag though is kept to an acceptable level though and the gameplay is slow. So it's not game breaking. Xbox One X looks good still though, surprisingly in my opinion, but the Xbox One S is obviously the very low settings of a PC equivalent on gaming. It is not dull cyberpunk levels of performance, so don't worry Xbox One players, just maybe wait for a sale before you buy it. And Disclaimer, this is the worst it gets. This is the worst section I could find in the game. And there are some other sections that are almost just as bad. But for the majority of the game, you will be getting a decent 30 or 60 FPS if you are on Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. Xbox One, regardless of where you go, you will get almost on Xbox One X a 30 FPS stable experience. But most of the time, Xbox One S does drop below its target frame rate. On the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series A side of things though, it does deliver a sharper image nonetheless, surprisingly coming from the Xbox Series S, but of course Xbox Series X comes with higher texture assets and ray trace shadows and reflections, which the latter is missing until they update it. Xbox Series S only runs at 30 FPS dynamic, uh, 1440p I believe, and the Xbox Series X is of course dynamic 4K with either 30 FPS mode with ray tracing or 60 FPS mode without ray tracing. I think the game still plays great at 30 FPS and it looks much better to me, so I played it all on 30 FPS on my first playthrough. I will say though that the higher difficulties and the new game plus with the hardcore difficulty coming next year as DLC, the 60 FPS mode is going to be a must. Be aware though that this is not a locked 60 FPS as I mentioned before, so hopefully it'll get patched before that releases. And to finish, the loading times after death are a pain on the older Xbox One consoles. So definitely on the current gen Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S you're getting 3-5 to five seconds. 
sound design. I will say that the sound design is almost as important to me as the graphics themselves in horror video games and this Callisto Protocol delivers one of the best sound designs in horror video games that I've heard in a while. By the way, fun the detail that this will make Xbox One consoles run their fans like a PS4. I invite you to check out my Twitter and Facebook where I'll be posting videos of gameplay and high quality images that I capture from it just in case you're interested. But suffice to say this is a new standard of quality that I hope other horror video games are going to aim for when it comes to sound design, achievements and fan servers. It is not for replayability, but it is great for achievement hunting since you can get the game in 10 to 12 hours, beat it through in the hardest difficulty, just make sure you are patient to learn the game, and you'll get all of the achievements pretty much in the first playthrough in 10 to 12 hours. The fan service when it comes to jump scares, paranormal, not good, but for everything else horror, I think it's decent, it's pretty good. Honestly, I was just Im I'm impressed. I am impressed by this game. Call me biased. But when it comes to actual man of culture, just be warned, you thirsty bastards, it doesn't come with a lot of that. I'm excited though for them to add DLC and hopefully it'll come with more achievements. CONCLUSION! I believe that this has potential to becoming a great horror sci-fi realistic video game franchise and I hope to see more in the future, especially with the DLC content with a story coming out in 2023 summer. So stay put with subscribe to the channel and a like if you like this content. It supports me to create more content like this for you and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace out.